the whole idea between malt and, and hops and even even the water that you use actually um, a lot of them they, I mean it's a very interdependent sort of combination like the type of water you use will make it taste maltier or hoppier um, the mineral balance the pH um, then the malts that you use add body to your beer um, gives it a foundation kind of flavor wise adds the sweetness uh, gives it the alcohol contents as well um, the I, mean, I think every home brewer has kind of the ambition to actually you know keep going with it and, you know some people will spend many thousands of dollars on equipment just for their home um, just because they're kind of chasing consistency or new new flavor it's about because when you homebrew you know you do everything and it's you make it you, it's your one beer that you sit and stare at for three weeks and then you bottle it um, but here you know it's just fun by the way yeah it is that's <laughs> it's, a, it's a blast um, but here it's more like you focus on your own segment and that's what you do that's your job is one aspect of the whole beer's life the more alcohol you add to the beer the more things you have to deal with um, in terms of the volumes of malt that you work with, um, in terms of the alcohol content, because um, the higher the alcohol go, and I mean, you know, IPAs, porter stouts typically have, you know, I wouldn't, I'd say six plus percent, um, and you know, uh, after about eight percent, it gets kind of tricky in terms. That's usually about it. I don't know. Yeah, For me, that's usually about it. I mean, that's you know, the best part of the day is. You know, I mean, if you're a production brewery, like, well, I mean, technically it's a production brewery. If we make the same beer over and over again, it gets boring. But if you're allowed to do other things and I don't know, keep some creativity in it, that's kind of a nice part of it. Love of beer for the most part. That's probably the easiest way to put it. Uh, I've been brewing since home brewing for, uh, I think since I was in college. Actually, the thing that usually does is when you're in college, you don't want to have to pay for beer, so you want to make it yourself. Because you can, you have the ability to do so, so you try it, and then either a you you, you know, works out well or it doesn't work out well, and you still try to choke it down and drink it because it has alcohol in it. But but then uh, hopefully the buzz, you know, the actual uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The greatness of beer will actually take over, and you love the fact of actually making it, and it's you know it's really interesting to do. It's a very interesting chemical process, so it's a lot of fun for that. Uh, and then you get to keep going and going. And, Hope you get better at it. Yeah, I mean, I was the same way. I was in college. I really liked beer. I figured out I liked good beer. Uh, I couldn't afford it, so I tried to make it. Uh, and I failed it over and over. Um, but I figured out I really liked the process. I liked doing it. And, and that's what I like about working here is, you know, the beer is uh, a bonus, but I enjoy the work, which is sort of, the, you know, any job, that's the most important part. It's kind of funny, it's always the same way, it's one drink for cheap. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> and there, you know, you get, you know, you kind of you know, want to make something that hopefully nobody's ever really ever made. You don't want to be the same over and over again. And at that point, you kind of, you know, you, you get together and you can kind of discuss different processes and different ideas and different concepts. And hopefully at that point, you know, you get a little more on the creative side to try to make a beer that nobody's ever made. I mean, you can always repeat stuff, that's, you know. But read a couple of books, you can do it. With us, it's more, yeah. we sit down, it's not as heady as that, as that as it may seem, we brew what we want to drink. We sit down, we're like, all right, we really want to drink this beer, it's July, it's going to be hot, so we're going to make a really light, hoppy Saison, which is what we did this summer. I think that's part of the process is, a lot of what we do is experiment, which is what a lot of brewers do, and it, things can work out really well, but also things will surprise you so you know we make a beer we don't know what it's going to taste like before we make it we don't do test batches we come up with a recipe we have an idea of a goal uh, and then we give it our best shot so you know who knows what the result is and then uh, you know for the most part we kind of know what we're doing you know to you know, how we're you know how much we're going to add to it you know kind of you know you get there's a certain recipe that it kind of that you kind of follow and from there you know it just we you know we don't normally make bad beer which is good uh, I think everything we've made has been really good. And I'm not a brewer, so I don't, uh, you know, I don't make the recipes. But part of what the brewers do is they understand ingredients and what ingredients do to a beer. So they don't have to sit down and make a beer five times to perfect it. They can sit down and figure out what ingredients they want to use, and then just go ahead and brew it. 
And that's where experience comes into play because you use an ingredient a number of times, you know how, how it works, and then you can use it in another beer. Well, I mean, I, a lot of times when I work here, every day I have like moments or long periods of time where I have no idea what I'm doing where I'm just like wandering around the line, hoping not to screw up. But I think that's part of it. It's like, you know, you don't, it's not like you, it's, part of the fun. it's not you're like, a, you're not a master, you know? You just, it's, this is a, a job just like anyone has a job. So you learn and you get better over time, but I don't think it's, you reach a point and you're, you're there. Yeah, I don't think you're ever really there when it comes to that. I mean, you're always learning, you're always doing something new. And, you know, always, hopefully always, you know, challenging yourself. And, you know, keep pushing forward and try to do new things and or just make it better for the most part. Uh, it's, I think it's kind of one of those you know, industries that, you know, it kind of chooses you to some extent. But if you have to love beer, that's, I think that's the main thing. And if you have a homebrew experience, you know, you mean pretty much everybody here is homebrew. You know, at some point in time in their lives. So, you know, at that point, you know, if you can get a job in a brewery, which most people don't think that they can, because, you know, it's like kind of a dream job for most people. I work in a brewery, my God. And again, like you said, it's kind of a job like any other job. I mean, you know, work six days or five days a week and long hours. There's no sunlight in here in the wintertime. And, you know, so it's, it's a normal job. But again, you know, we get to drink and have fun after we're done working. Of course. We know the taste occasionally. That's as far as we go. But, uh, I mean, I lived with four guys when I started working here. Um, so I was making a lot of beer on my own and they were drinking a lot of it. So I started working here and taking beer home and they still drank a lot of it. So, I mean, they were excited. Um, and I think that from the outside perspective, it's sort of glamorous that, I mean, just the name, it's a craft beer. Everyone thinks it's like this craft, but I mean, to an extent it is, but uh, I mean, it's a process and you learn the process and a lot of it is executing it consistently every day. Um, and I think that's when you find success, is when you can do something well, but you can do it really consistently. And that's, I think, the struggle, especially for small breweries that don't have um, the capital for a lot of equipment uh, or, or labs or that sort of thing, to, to be really consistent and to put out a good product every day without you know, spending a lot of money trying to get that done. Because that's what the, I mean, the big, I, I have trouble listening to the argument about these craft uh, breweries versus these big um, macro breweries. But what those breweries do really well is they put out a really consistent product and they do it really efficiently. They do it all the time, yeah. And I know that every small brewery would like to have those two attributes. They would like to be more efficient and they would like to be more consistent. So in, those, in that regard, I think you know, we have a lot of respect for people that can make a, a million or a billion barrels of beer a year. There's a reason why they make that many because they've done it well and they are able to sell that much. Which but, is pretty amazing that they can yeah. pull that off. But this beer just tastes so much better. <laughs> they, yeah, there, well, there is something to be said for the smaller batches. You know, I mean, we don't make that big, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's more of the human touch, I think, that gets involved, especially here. Industries that, you know, it kind of chooses you to some extent. But you have to love beer. That's, I think that's the main thing. And if you have a homebrew experience, you know, you I mean pretty much everybody here is homebrew. You know, at some point in time in their lives. So, you know, at that point, you know, if you can get a job in a brewery, which most people don't think that they can, because, you know, it's like kind of a dream job for most people. I work in a brewery, my God. And again, like you said, it's kind of a job like any other job. I mean, you know, work six days or five days a week and long hours. There's no sunlight here in the wintertime. And, you know, so it's, it's a normal job. But again, you know, we get to drink and have fun after we're done working. You know the taste occasionally, and that's as far as we go. But, uh, yeah. Look, that's a good question. <laughs> I've had a few of these by now, so. Um, what is your, like, do your friends think that it's awesome or if you first started, do your friends, like, all about it? I mean, I lived with four guys when I started working here. Um, so I was making a lot of beer on my own and they were drinking a lot of it. So I started working here and taking beer home and they still drank a lot of it. So, I mean, they were excited. Uh, and I think that from the outside perspective, it's sort of glamorous that, 
I mean, just the name, it's a craft beer. Everyone thinks it's like this craft, but I mean, to an extent it is, but uh, I mean, it's a process and you learn the process and a lot of it is executing it consistently every day. Um, and I think that's when you find success is when you can do something well, but you can do it really consistently. And that's, I think, the struggle, especially for small breweries that don't have um, the capital for a lot of equipment uh, or, or labs or that sort of thing to, to be really consistent and to put out a good product every day without you know spending a lot of money trying to get that done. Because that's what the, I mean the big, I, I have trouble listening to the argument about these craft uh, breweries versus these big um, macro breweries. But what those breweries do really well is they put out a really consistent 